military, and they have to scrap Article 9, the Peace Constitution of Japan, and they have to put Japan back to honor its name. These all are very terrifying to me, and I see that Japan is going back on the way on the road before the 1930s when it prepares people for invasion of other Asian countries. And that is why it's important for people in the West, for people around the world, to send a message, a clear and loud message to Japan that we would not let this happen. The world would not let this denial to continue. And that is why the importance of the City Hall Council, the City Council's resolution, the motion to send a very strong message to Japan. And I would like to thank Christian Wong Tan for, his, for her courage to lead the motion and lead the debate in City Hall. And I would like to make a formal introduction. Uh, Christian, would you come up here? I would like to ask her to tell you why she proposed a motion and why at the beginning the motion or the suggestion of a Nanjing Massacre Memorial Week or Education Week was turned down by the mayor's office. And it's because of action, the action of also Councillor Chin Lee, who have brought the whole council to vote and forced the mayor to change his position. Christian. Thank you very much, Joseph, and thank you for the introduction. You know, the work that Alpha Toronto does is, is uh, important, not just here in Toronto, but it's actually heard around Canada and around the globe. The, uh, the beginning of the story of trying to get the proclamation uh, signed by the mayor in, uh, in the city of Toronto began almost two months ago. And uh, prior to that, for about four months, we've been organizing the photo exhibit which uh, was on display at City Hall from November the 27th to December the 2nd. Uh, when we asked the mayor to uh, you know, essentially proclaim that December 9th was the anniversary of the Nanking Massacre, 75th anniversary of that, uh, there was resistance. And there was resistance also from the protocol office. And the reason why they denied our request, which I thought was a very simple request, was they said that this was a politically controversial event. And uh, now I can tell you that as a polit political entity that City Hall is, we get admired in all sorts of political controversies. But what I didn't understand was why the Nan King Massacre would be deemed as politically controversial. We know that it is historically, uh, it took place as an event. We are aware that there are documented evidence throughout history uh, there was an international safety zone that was set up in the city of Nanking, and there were many, many foreigners there. People that were not Japanese and that were not Chinese, and they were simply there because of humanitarian or uh, Christian missions, or they're there on business, or they're there uh, belonging to the, to the media. And uh, so it was not going to be refutable that something took place in Nanking. We may have a disagreement over the numbers, 200,000 or 300,000, but that is not the point. The point is that the Nanking Massacre did take place, and that we have one of the largest Chinese-Canadian populations in the city of Toronto, and that the, although there may be some who say that it is politically controversial, I would also argue that it is politically the right thing to do. So for two months, we very quietly and very diligently uh, tried to persuade the mayor to change his mind on the proclamation. And the proclamation can only be signed by the mayor of Toronto. So I, as a city councillor, don't issue proclamations. And, uh, and Ch Councillor Chin Lee, who was working with me on this endeavor, also do not issue proclamations. And uh, what happened is, although we offered the mayor books, including the, the groundbreaking work of Iris Chang and the rape of Nanking, we offered him DVDs. We offered him all sorts of counter uh, literary materials that were out there. Uh, research materials by uh, historical universities, uh, including in, uh, information that was gathered by the University of Toronto, and, uh, and there was no response from the mayor's office. And when I spoke to the mayor uh, personally uh, in the November council meeting, he said to me, Councillor, it's politically controversial, I don't want to do it. Um, so he forced our hand, 
unfortunately, and I had to go to the city council, which is something we don't do. So proclamations are not issued by city council. Proclamations come through the protocol office to the mayor's office. And ultimately, the proclamations uh, are at the discretion of the mayor. And Mayor Ford, uh, and not to his credit this time, but he, he just refused. He refused to listen, which I think was just very disrespectful. But he also refused to acknowledge that, that this was something that was important to a very large constituency in the city of Toronto. And that's what I found very disheartening. But, you know, Councillor Chin Lee and I said, you know, this is so important to our community, we need to forget about the mayor. This is important enough to our community that we need to go to city council and break the protocol, which is allowing the protocol office and the mayor to have this, the final say. And we, we moved the motion on the floor of city council. And we tried to introduce this motion on the floor of city council. And at first it was rejected by the speaker, who's Speaker Nunziata. And she said to me, this is not urgent. And I said to Speaker Nunziata, Speaker, the events are taking place across the deep GTA at the first week, the second week of December, it is urgent. And this day is November 28th that I'm having this conversation with, with the speaker. And, uh, and only with the intervention of Councillor Peter Milchin, who worked very, very hard, I must say. And Peter Milchin is on the mayor's executive. And I tell you this story because I think it's important that the community understands what we had to do to get the Nanking um, proclamation. But Peter Milchin intervened, and he said to the mayor's office, you have a very large Chinese voting bloc, and this will not look favorably upon you if you don't do this. And then he spoke to Councillor Nunziata, who, who I think then said, okay, fine, we'll allow them to introduce this, this item. And so we got it onto the floor of council on November the 28th. But before the council vote on 2 p.m., we held a press conference in the rotunda right outside the photo exhibit. And who came out to the press conference were obviously the media. So all of a sudden, because of the mayor's denial of the, of the Nanking proclamation, it became a much more public event than we would normally have had attention to. Because the proclamation could have been signed very quietly and would have just been issued off. So in my hand is a proclamation that's still not signed by the mayor, unfortunately. Um, although the proclamation did pass, on November the 28th, and there was great media coverage from Omni News to all the our major Chinese dailies, including the National Post, and there was some coverage in our online blogs. But what was really so tragic about it is that it really took too long. And so even though justice has been denied to the, to the victims of the Nanking Massacre, justice again was denied at City Council until Council took the vote, and the vote was unanimous. So what I have in my hand is a proclamation from the City of Toronto still not signed. And I hope to have the signature on it um, very soon. And I will be able to send it to Alpha Toronto and to, as well as to all the other organizations that have invited me and other councillors to speak about the Nan King Massacre to commemorate the 75th anniversary so that they can have a record that the City of Toronto acknowledges this historical event and thinks that it's important to, ex uh, to express its understanding and its compassion to the victims and to ensure that this never happens again. So thank you very much for the evening. with us, okay, but we need your help in order for the world.